Okay, welcome back, everyone. We've finished um, our session in our groups. Let's present now our flag. So who would like to present first? I can. <clears throat> okay, great. Let's have okay. your group flag. So we, we picked a uh, easy one. Uh, we think it's easy. So it's a Japanese flag. And here, oh. So to your uh, screen, sorry. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so here's the HTML site. We decide to make a container and call the flag border. And then uh, inside the container, there's a, a circle and we made a circle uh, in a class circle. In a okay. And on CSS, CSS side, we uh, did the flag border uh, to be solid, one pixel solid and black color, and height of 250 uh, with uh, 400, and display inline block margin. Uh, what? This one doesn't do anything. But anyway, and circle is height of 180, width is 180, margin that 9%. I'm trying to get it to in the center, mm -hmm. and the background will be red. So, uh, because the Japanese flag is, is, has a red in, circle in the center and meaning it's the rising sun and the border is the radius is 50%. And then as if I run this, there. Nice, okay, well done guys. Can I add something to it so that we can center the flag in the middle of the page? Sure. Okay. So this is a rule that I would be introducing tomorrow or actually Thursday when I do a website demo. Uh, let's remove line five and six. And let's add a rule margin in flag border. Yeah, just where margin below width, yeah. Margin zero the number zero, space auto. I tried that, but it wasn't working, so. Okay, let's, let's see. Um, oh, okay. Oh, well, I tried auto, so the auto wouldn't work. Yeah, you have auto. to make it zero auto. Zero Margin auto. zero auto. Yes, I'll be explaining this in depth when we do that demo how it works and how it's really useful to center divs. Margin zero auto. Okay, because I thought just one, because normally if you put just one number, it's do all four. Right, but if you say margin zero and then auto, it will center the div that way. Oh, got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, great job guys. And uh, all right, round of applause for Isaiah's group. Now, who would like to present next? I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I'm not going to tear it down. Uh, I could try. I'm pretty uh, pretty rough, but uh, I'll give it a go. Okay. All right. Let's see you, Edward. Okay. So my team decided to go with the uh, Norwegian flag. Okay. Uh, and to start off uh, in HTML, we made a class that was background. And then we made a, this is the parent class. And then we made another class who's also a child of the parent, but a parent of the, the other classes below, which would be top, top left, top right. Top would be the um parent to top left and top right and then pretty much same thing down here okay. the class bottom would be the parent to bottom left and bottom right and then over here we started with the background which is pretty much the container for everything um we started we made it doable for the time so the width was a uh, 370 px or uh, pixels and then the height was 283 
we uh, put inline blocks so that the blocks would be um, in line instead of staggering uh, below or not staggering, but resting on top of each other, I, I guess. Okay. And then the overflow we put to hidden because at the bottom it would, it was shooting out pretty good. Okay. So can we, can we just uh, have a visual of what it looks like without that rule? Can you comment it out just to show us what it, what it does? All right. It just, it just slightly moves it. Okay. So, so what you do is the overflow is this little, pretty much the container, what the okay. container is set to. And then anything that pops out of it is what's overflowing out of it. So whenever you put overflow hidden, it just will hide whatever's flowing out of your container or your background. And it just Nicely. cleans it up a little bit. Nicely done. So, uh, we decided to go with that um, for the top. Let's see. I think we have one extra. I'm not sure exactly. Let's see the line items. Tom. Um, this uh, I'm not positive about how to say this, but as, as far as um, yeah, this I'm not, I'm not sure how to explain these ones yet. Um, but pretty much making them fit. Um, which ones are we talking about? Top, bottom, top, this bottom. top one right here. Yeah. So the, we've got display flex so that it will fit. Okay. Um, so display flex is the topic of tomorrow's lectures. So you guys kind of went ahead and used the rules from tomorrow and applied it and that's okay. It looks like it worked. You guys made it work. But in order to explain how flex works, it's it takes a bit of practice. So it seems okay. like you applied it and it works, but we don't know exactly how it works yet. Understood. Understood. So it just made everything go in there. And then um, so uh, align items just wanted to put it to the top of the container or the background in this case. So we just wanted to put everything up without float. Um, and I think the justify content space between just kind of speaks for itself is just spacing them out. And, uh, so anyways, top left, we went for 100 pixels for height and width. And then of course, red for the region. And then here's where we went ahead and put the border right at 20 pixels solid with a color of white so that we didn't have to nest another div inside of a div to make this more complicated. Uh, we just we just built a big border around it instead of putting a red box inside of a div that's a white box and then adjusting the um, pixels for that to fit and show up right. Okay. Um, top right, it was the same pretty much almost almost the same but the width had to be a little bit longer for the norwegian flag so uh we adjusted that as well and then of course we did the the border just 20 pixels all around just to make it look even like the, the norwegian flag does so this was the flag itself and this is um the project okay. that they developed Okay, let's let's slow down here because I noticed yeah. something I want to point out. Please do. Uh, see here how we have on one line 20 pixels solid and then semicolon color white. You actually have two rules on the same line because a semicolon says this is the end of this rule. So we would just delete the semicolon? If you want to see that 20 pixels of solid white. Yeah, you have to delete that semicolon. And that would change it definitely. And you have to delete the colon as well and color, the word color. Uh, and it's on me, my bad. Hey, no worries. And no, nah, man, it's on all of us. So uh, save this and let's see the difference. If it's okay, changed, I don't go. want to break it. Uh -huh. 
I didn't really change too much. Yeah, and that's because the border that you added around was already white. And so when you said color white, you were affecting the color of the font that would have been in there. And so now that we've made it to be our, the rule should have been defined, then it, it makes no difference. But what it was is that you had extra code there. You're affecting the color twice. Okay. Now you're just uh, attaching the color white to an already white by default border. Understood. I appreciate the feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so good job, guys. I like your effort. Um, we went into tomorrow's lecture material, which is flex. So it may be a bit confusing to the rest of us how we arrange these blocks using flex. We will go over that tomorrow. And that will be what we will be pivoting to, um, to uh, from inline block. So today's assignment was the purpose was to use inline block to style a flag. And um, we are going to be learning something new tomorrow, like I said, again, which is flex and why it's useful. So actually right now I'd like Shannon's group to present. And uh, we'll use Shannon's group as an example of why flex is better than inline block. Okay. But I wanted you guys to get familiar with it. So if you would guys uh, present next, Shannon, and who else was in your group? Yeah, it'd be Austin. Austin, right. Sure. Yes. So Shannon and Austin, if you could present next, your flag. Okay, let's see. Um, um, okay. So this is our call. Okay. And which nation are we doing or which flag is it? Uh, this is the Romanian flag. It's my nationality. Okay. Romanian. Yeah. Um, and can we see what that looks like before we see your, your version? Oh, yeah. The, the actual flag? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Shannon, you want to just like Google Romanian flag real quick? Tell them what it looks like. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's kind of uh oh well that well then that's it, right? Is that yeah. that completed flag? Then we don't need to do it. So that's it. Okay. Oh. Don't bother. Um okay, so we have three bars. They're side by side next to each other. And uh when I uh stepped into Austin and Shannon's group, they asked me how to how to uh fix a problem that they were having. Can we see your index.html to see that um problem that we were seeing about the little white space between the blocks? Yeah, we were struggling with that. So can you show me the index.html, Shannon, if you'd click that? Okay. Now let's, do you see how we have our HTML a little bit messy? Let's format our document. Let's right click and format document. This is how we would expect our code to look like, right? We use format document to make our code uh, readable. And this is pretty nice. This is readable code. Let's see what the flag looks like now. Oh, uh, you might need to save that first. Oh, yeah. You'd oh, I'm sorry. It. Save. You see how now there's a little bit of white space between the blue and the white and the red blocks there that make up the Romanian flag. This little space is an annoying little space that comes with using inline block. So inline block is, is easy to understand, easy to use. Whatever you apply inline block to will be pair, you will be side by side next to its neighbor. But when it does so, it it has this little white space. And you no matter how much you eliminate the margin and border, uh, there's nothing you can do to eliminate that white space unless you arrange your HTML code in a certain way. Okay, so let's go back to your Visual Studio Code, Shannon. And uh, hold down Control and press Z. Do you see how now each line is uh, connecting to the next without fully ending uh, its caret? See, line 11, the caret went down onto 12. It connects its uh, ending caret uh, or its closing div to the opening div. 
and then that indents on the next line and they all connect this way. That's the way to eliminate that little white space using inline block. And if this is the only way to do it, to make our code a little bit unreadable like this, then we wanna avoid using inline block from now on. So now that we have a good grasp of this, we're gonna take off the training wheels and pivot tomorrow to a deeper uh, method of arranging div blocks on our page called flex is which uh, is which is what you, which is what we've seen in the flag group before okay they used flex and um, we have to learn how to apply flex it's a little bit more of a learning curve than inline block but we're going to use it so that we can avoid problems like formatting our code and avoiding white spaces as well as flex has a whole uh, library of tools that come with it so uh, great job, guys. I appreciate you guys sharing your group and, and sharing uh, how uh, we overcame this little um, problem of the white space. So yeah. uh, just real quick, uh, Isaiah just asked if we can do the margin zero. And uh, no, we definitely tried that to get rid of the white spaces. The Wouldn't you have to negative margin or something to get rid of it? Yeah, we had the same issue. We just used a negative margin and it pushed it away. Oh, yeah, we did like margin minus five or something like that. Margin minus five pixels. Yeah, okay. And that's, I guess that would be a way to get around it. Um, it's a creative way to get around to getting into negative numbers. <laughs> but um, what, we, what we're what we going to want to do is transition into flex anyway. So even though we can avoid the white spaces using that, it's it's too much of a hassle. Plus, flex gives us more, much more flexibility with how to arrange our divs on the page. Okay, so we're gonna rely on that, and we'll introduce how to do that tomorrow. So great job, guys! Thank you for presenting. Let's move on to another group. We can. Uh, we'll go next. Okay, go ahead. Um, we'll set that. And they start to okay. So yeah. And the Moldova flag. Okay. You make that bigger. Uh what I could do. Like that? That's yeah, good. Oh yeah, we got the Moldova flag. We started with made three divs and then we just put those three divs in the at the cl in the container. Just so we can align it all together later on. Mm -hmm. And then we can go next. And then first we started with blue. We started with blue. Try to see how that works. We got the height to four hundred, width to two fifty, and we got to like inline block so it could be aligned with wherever next we put down. That's okay. we did the same thing for yellow, but then yellow, we also added a background image. And at first it was pretty big, so we just had to, uh, we changed the background to no repeat and then we positioned the center. Okay. And then the background size. And then we just, for what we did for first color, we did for the red, for blue. Okay. And then we just, at the top, we just the container to collect, select them all and just made them position in the middle of the screen nice and we use position absolute so we're gonna for now that's okay to use but we're gonna say from now on let's avoid using uh that rule position mm -hmm. no problem but yeah see our space is gone too because of the margin so we just added that to the blue and the yellow okay nicely done how'd you guys find the image that go in the middle uh, that goes in the middle we got it off of Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> Wikipedia has everything. All right. Great. Great job, guys. And one more group. Well, I think I think we have a few more. Another group we'd like to present. Was that it? Did we finish? Um, I guess no. I guess we can go next. Okay, we'll go. Okay. Yeah, so um, we tried doing the uh, the United States flag. So this is what's, what, what the HTML looks like. 
Uh, so basically what we did is uh, we separated the flag into two halves, the halves with uh, the, the blue part and anything under the blue part would be th uh, the second half. So um, yeah, that's what we basically did. So like the part with the blue part has seven stripes. So that's why we have like uh, seven stripes over here. And then the second half has six stripes in total, which is why uh, we named it six stripes. And then for the stars, we just kind of like copy and pasted it like over and over again. And then, um, yeah, like uh, because we did this way, we weren't able to like really like uh, like individual space them apart. So that was kind of a problem at the end. But uh, I think, yeah, with the time we had, we couldn't really do much else. Okay. And, uh, if you want to see the result as well. Uh, All right. Yeah, of course. Let's see the result. Uh, as you can see like the spacing is a bit weird but i think like everything else isn't too bad there's like a bit of like minor spacing issue over here as well but uh yeah pretty close you guys got really close it's your first time working on the flag too so we salute you Something called letter spacing. You can try. Mm, okay. Letter spacing. Do you have a link to that, Vincent? Yeah, it's in the Zoom. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna check that out. Uh, yeah, check out that letter spacing for the stars. See if you can fix it with that. Definitely okay. reading that now. Okay, uh, and we had another group, right? So let's get that group to present. Round of applause. All right, James. Uh, you share the screen? Yes, sir. So we also did Norway, and um, if we had enough, if we had more time, we, we were going to actually revise the HTML and uh, so we can like reorganize everything so that everything is actually more clear cut. But yeah, we basically made this a lot harder than it should have been. So, so yeah. Um, just ignore the container. We were gonna get rid of that. So, so to start off, we for the blue in the Norway Norwegian flag, we decided to set up set it up as a parent as a parent tag and with the class background. So, and we basically created four boxes. So box one, this was box three. This is box. Oh, sorry. I think I should draw this. So this was so this is box one, this is box three, and this is box two, and this is box four. We were gonna actually um change the order if we had time, but yeah. So uh, hey James, could you go to the CSS? Yep. Yeah. So for box one, um, we be we basically assigned the background color of red, and um, so display was inline box, so so that the so that box three would go up would be in the same line as well. So based so just based on a sample image, we calculated that the height would be, I mean, the height would be 600 and the width would be 812. So within that constraints, we, and the spacing between that, we found, we discovered that the width should be 235 and the height would also be 235. So since this is a square. So, and for the white and for the white, and for the whites in the flag, we decided to just create a border. So we did 40 PX, 40 PX, and then, and for the style we did solid and just the color white. So here we would have, we decided to just go with, so we would just create a space between the bottom and the right. So yeah, so hence border bottom and border right. And so moving on to box three. So this was originally box two, but then we, then we realized that we were actually going out of order. So we just decided to switch it around. So. For box three, we just 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 so we can push it up to the same line as box one, we decided to go with display inline block, and we, and I guess that would, yeah. And then so for this one, because this one's a bit more extended, we we just we decided the width should be four forty five, and also the height would just be the same, so two thirty five, and so. Um, yeah, so same background color and basically we would, we made the same adjustments to the border, but this time for the, for the left side as well. 
And so for the margins, so just I just realized that this would have been we could have just saved us all the trouble if we just used flex. But then again, this is this is for today's course. So um, yeah, so we just made we just made an approximation to see how just to cover as cover as much background space as possible. So we decided to go with forty seven point five. So yeah, and um, yeah, we I realized that because the because the width goes over the um, over the page that every, so even if, so because everything, because the width, the, because um the page isn't gonna hold all, hold the width in one line, I realized that inline block could just work for, we could just use inline block for everything. So yeah, so so we also did display inline block here and display inline block as well. But this time we just made the necessary changes to the margins to make sure that it was spacing out to the right positions. So yeah. Okay, nicely done. And very thorough, in-depth explanation. Good job, Ryan. Oh, okay, thanks. And I think that ends our presentations. Do we have any other group? Yeah, we still have to present, yeah. Okay, let's get uh, that group's presentation. One second. And this is, I see the Denmark flag. Um, you may be muted if you're speaking. Are you speaking, Clerk? I don't know. Once I share my screen, I don't know how to, I'm supposed to hit the space bar to do it. It doesn't register. Uh, did you want to share or did you want me to share? Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, La I I don't know how to pronounce his name. Lax. You can share it. I'll just I'll just talk us through it. So basically, what we did was we just had the div classes set up in like rows. So we basically did row one for the box, row two for the other box, and then uh we have those classes set up and in, in their own div. And then uh for the CSS, what we did was for so there you can see that we have so for, to once we're done with the whole thing, we had a text align. We made it centered. So we started off with making the whole background white so we can get the stripe in the middle. And then for the row one, since both of them had to be together, we we um, put the background color for the row one to red, the height to 120, width to 90. And then we inline blocked it so they're right next to each other and we put the margin to 20. So the little commented out code is what we were trying to do was trying to make the background gray and have the stripe go through the, the, white, the white plus, go through the middle, but that's why it's commented out because we couldn't get to it. And we kind of did the same thing for row two as we did it for row one. Uh, the background color was red, the height was 120, width was, um, I can't really read that. I think it was 270. And then uh, we inline blocked that as well with the margin of 20. And uh, that basically got us that. And then uh, towards the end, we went back up and text aligned it to center. So it's in the middle. Okay, nicely done. Uh, I noticed on line eight, you have a little error there. That's the after white, you have a, a uh, parentheses. Okay. Um, okay. So generally, this is pretty good. Also, when we present our work or when we turn in our code, we, we want to have all of our commented code deleted, right? We want the final product to be clean. So that means any commented code that is code that we're not using, let's delete that. So nicely done. Let's give them a round of applause. And round of applause to everyone that presented today. Good job. I'm proud of you guys. You guys are skilling up in developers as developers pretty fast, right? So last week we did JavaScript for the first time. Um, we were able to write if statements for loops. Now we're able to create uh, boxes on HTML and CSS and arrange those divs in a certain way. This is the first step to figuring out how to look at a web page that we want to mimic or mock and uh, figure out how we can arrange, uh, divide the website that we're trying to mock into squares and place those blocks in our uh, representation, in our view, okay? So we're going to want to do it using a different method, using flex, what we're going to introduce tomorrow. So now let me share the screen.
Let me share my screen. So we finished our flag presentations today. You should have plotting your blocks done uh, as a core assignment done by the end of the day. After today's work, we should all have this done, know how to do it, plotting your blocks. The homework is to read about flex, the flex advantage, justify content and being flexible, the game. So tomorrow's lectures uh, will introduce how to style blocks on a page, but now using flex instead of inline block. Okay, we're gonna wanna use this method now instead of inline block. So after today, I shouldn't see much use of inline block at all, almost none, after we introduce flex. All right, so inline block was our, our training wheels to a better way, which is flex. Okay, and with that being said, do we have any questions about what we're, our goals are, where we're going, anything we learned today? Okay, all right. All right, well, this is a good note to end the day on. Successful flags. You guys have the rest of the day to work on your assignments. We'll open up the Zoom chat for breakout rooms that you guys can collaborate in. And, uh, TAs and uh, myself will be available to help you with anything that you're working on for the rest of the day. Again, the goal is to read about flex and to be ready tomorrow to ask questions about flex uh, so that we're having a better understanding. We're not seeing it for the first time as I'm introducing it in the lecture, okay? I'll stop the share, stop the recording.